All right, mate. The yeah, Coach Girl Podcast is brought to you by Think and Grow Business, the home of the Think and Grow Business Mastermind. If you're serious about growing your business, get serious and join a mastermind group today. Find out more at thinkandgrowbusiness.com.au. Hey there, it's Tony here and welcome to this special edition of the Coach Call Podcast. Today I'm talking to my good friend, Maddie Bailey. Stay tuned. I just get such a kick out of listening to that intro all the time. Brings back great memories of running the New York Marathon with my wife, Sharon, in 2018. It's uh, always puts a smile on my face, as I'm sure that you'll get a smile on your face in this episode of the Coach Call podcast. As you know, uh, a good friend of the podcast returns today. If you've been a regular listener to the podcast, you'll know all about Matt Bailey. He's an aspiring musician. He's released a number of songs. He's got them on Spotify, iTunes, Apple Music. He's just released, actually it just seems like yesterday he released his latest song and I understand he's back in the studio already. Already, We've talked to him about everything from weight loss to mindset to relationships and it's an absolute pleasure once again to have Matt join us. Hey Matt, welcome to the podcast. Thanks Tony, it's, uh, it's good to be back. Okay. Hey, you've been a busy boy. I have. It's, um, <laughs> yeah, very busy. Our, our latest podcast feels like yesterday as well. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I didn't it? realize life it just, was... Life just seems to go yeah, so it was, quick. Um, it does, it does. And when you your head down and life happens, then you kind of can, you look up and you're like, oh, it's uh, it's August already. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I Every week, like, like it's it's become a real thing for me that every week, Thursday just seems to rock around and all of a sudden you're thinking, my God, it's Thursday already. What have I done for the week? So, I th- yeah, I think when you're like, when you're, when you're focused on something every day or you've got a passion for me being my music, time yep. just flies. I don't, I don't, pay attention to time i don't think it's just you know i wake up and just keep going <laughs> yeah it is it is and um then all of a sudden it's friday and then you're back in the grind again on monday so and uh, absolutely it's like it's august 16 today and it just yeah. seems like yesterday i was doing february fire up with all the the people in the uh the coach girl academy group so uh, yeah uh, yeah unbelievable yeah, hey tell I, me I, about career life I, I, Crew life, mate. <laughs> wasn't that, wasn't that a journey? Um, <laughs> it's uh, I, yeah. I actually started writing it last year, and um, it can't. I want to tell a little bit of a story that I haven't really told. You go for and it. And it, it kind of, it kind of comes into like the world, kind of, of what, what we live in now, and all this stuff. And I, there was a flight. I had a flight attendant on board, and and she knew. She knew someone I knew, and we got talking, and I like just you know she loved my service, and I gave her gave her some free alcohol to take. And anyway, she, she looked me up on uh, uh, Instagram and sent me a message and said, "Hey, thanks for hooking me up. You're a legend." Blah blah blah. And that was it. But then I remember looking at her profile, and it was just uh, bikini shot after bikini shot after bikini shot. Yeah. And I just kind of. I'm like, you know what? I need to write this song. I need to write this song um, because it's just there's so much things I want to say, but without you know upsetting everyone, I'm going to put it in a song. Everyone got people got upset anyway, but that was kind of what started writing that song. I'm thinking like you know, if I and think that you know they're better than everyone else. Not not all of them, but and you know I've watched a lot of flight attendants who I've worked beside. Uh, domestically and then go over to international um, and kind of think they're better than everyone and yeah. better than domestic and there's this ear and this is vibe and it's just like, you know, oh, it's we all do the same job. There's really no... So that was where the song started and I remember being in Brisbane 
in my hotel room. I just put up Garage Band on the iPad and just chose some two chords. And I can't remember if I had any lyrics, but I remember getting home that night and our lyrics just poured out. Yeah, yeah. I bet you um, had a lot of people thinking it was about them. Oh, 100%. And Crew Lock was the, is the best thing I've done so far for lots of reasons, Tony, lots of reasons, um, because it's something I'm proud of and I yeah. know it's good without sounding like, you know, full of myself. But, we, we you know, we criticise ourselves. Like, I wouldn't put it out if it wasn't good. Mm. There's nothing wrong with saying this song's good and it's the best thing I've done. Production-wise as well, it's the best thing I've done. And I'm constantly telling people about it and I don't care what they think because I'm proud of it and it's good. Where songs in the past, I haven't promoted it as much in life because I wasn't really proud of it. Not to say there weren't good songs, but just the production of it and all that. So, um, yeah, mm. a and lot of people like you know. There's a, you go, Tony. You go. And the video was a bit of fun with it as well. I mean, it, it, to me, it was. Um, I don't have a copy to play, unfortunately, while we're, while we're talking. But um, to me, it was just a, a good little fun song, and it was quite catchy, I guess, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. A lot of people said how catchy it is, and it stuck in their head. And, and it was kind of a scary thing, because it was the first song that I've released that no one's heard, yeah. apart from a handful of people. So... It was kind of a scary but exciting thing because where songs before I'll Be There, for instance, we'll get to there later, but people told me I'll Be There was good. So there was no, I had no doubts when putting it out yeah. that it wasn't going to have a good response. So with Crew Life, when only a handful of people have only heard it, I'm like, oh, okay, let's see how it goes. But I knew it was catchy because I remember I'd written like three verses um, probably a little bit more, but some verses still need to be finished. And then when we went to the studio and uh, the first thing we did in the studio was finish writing the lyrics. And I remember that chorus, it just it was stuck in my head all yeah. the way home and trying to play the verse on guitar. I couldn't, the way I was singing it was the way the chorus is sung, the melody. And I just couldn't, it took me a long time to like unlearn it to then be able to sing the chorus and the verse melody very separate. So, and just, yeah, like the promotion of it, I just went hard just every day on social mm. media and put some posters up around cities and, yeah, no, it was, it was good. <laughs> it's, um, it's a bit of a piss take, but isn't it? It is. It is a <laughs> piss take. But then again, it's also... Uh, it's real serious. life and it's a piss take. It is hundred percent real life and it's a piss take. Yeah. And you know like I've taken everything down, every every everything I've down and like online apart from crew life. So the only song you'll ever can find of me now is crew life because okay. I wanted this to be I kind of wanted this to be the starting platform and then go bigger and better. Okay. Um so, and with the music video, I um, I paid a professional to do that and uh, that cost an arm and a leg and it was great because it's so good and I love it and I'm like, I want to do this. I want to, I don't want to put out any crap anymore. I want to put out good quality stuff and, you know, so many people ask, who did your video, blah, blah, blah. You know, people think oh, I did it. I'm like, no, there's no way I could do that. Like, <laughs> you know, it's uh, the amount of detail that's gone into it and the amount of hours that went into it was a lot. Yeah. So I think yeah. he spent over thirty. I think he spent over thirty hours on it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And and you can see yeah. that in the in the quality of the song and the quality of the recording yeah. and the quality of the video. So I think, you know, overall, if that's now your new baseline, I, I guess we can look forward to what's going to come out in the future. Yeah. Yeah. So back in the studio, uh, Sunday. Yeah. I was. I was I was, up in, I was up in Canberra, so I um, squeezed a few hours in there, uh, recording an EP this time. Okay. So very excited, yep. very excited, Tony. I'm actually currently sitting in my um, in my childhood bedroom in a little town called Mount Gambier. 
here, South Australia, and this is kind of where it all, you know, where it all started. So, you know, this is where I played, started learning guitar okay. for six years, and then started started writing when I moved to Tassie. Yeah, and I think I feel like this EP is just fifteen years into five songs. Yeah, which okay. I I can't I can't wow. wait. So yep. what's the emotions like then at the moment? I mean, uh, it was interesting. I was speaking to someone the other day about redefining success for themselves. And, you know, sometimes there's so many memories and, and emotions and feelings that we evoke when we go back into hometowns, in your case, the home bedroom. In my case, it's walking yeah. along the beach at, um, at, at, on the Sunshine Coast, you know. It evokes yeah. those memories of better times. I, I won't say better times, but times where we felt the world was really open to opportunity. And sometimes we've got to tap into that to, to, to drive forward. So what's the emotions like at the moment sitting in the old bedroom trying to conjure that, that lifetime of music into a five-song um, EP? It's uh, it's very emotional, Tony. It's um, like you say, you go back and you you dive deep, and it just you kind of you kind you kind of remember where you started and why you started and all that stuff. As we've spoken about before yeah. on the podcast, uh, Dad taking his own life when I was thirteen. So you know that all happened. You know, I found out in this bedroom. So yeah. and you know, there's a song on there for him so um yeah it's uh it's an it's an amazing feeling and it's it's just so cool i just it's i'm speechless like i just can't sometimes you just can't put <laughs> feelings into words it's just this is what i've worked so hard for yeah and i can't, can't wait to record these five tracks like all all written at separate times as well some of them were um i wrote around the same time but it at the same time, it's not so much as when they were written. Like, you know, Dad took his own life, two thousand four. So, yeah. you know, it's it's probably all this. You know, I'm twenty nine now, so in a way, it's kind of these five songs are twenty nine years of experience, and I'm just really, really excited. Especially yeah. after the react, especially after the reaction I had with Crew Life. Yeah, because I finally found a producer that is amazing, and he did amazing work, and like when we were in the studio Sunday, the first song we started recording was I'll Be There and just three little changes he's already made to it. I'm like, this is awesome. Like, I just, I can't wait to see the final product. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we need that fresh set of eyes or in this case, the fresh set of ears. And You um, do. A, a question I'm dying to ask, what did Ed Sheeran think of his copy of Crew Life? <laughs> I think it, uh, <laughs> he's loving it, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah, he's cranking it on the planes, I reckon, and with his head, <laughs> with his headphones on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I know, um, you know, you've been lucky enough to meet um, Ed Sheeran, and uh, I did, and, and I could just imagine you slipping in the old USB drive into his back pocket as he well, as it's he funny trundles off the plane. See, so this is the thing. When I did meet him, someone was like, oh, did you have a CD with you to give him? And I yeah. didn't at the time. But, so this is 2000, this is a couple of years ago now. So even if I did have a CD, back then, I wouldn't have been as proud to give it to him. If I yeah. had a copy of Crew Life and I met him, boom, there you go, Ed. That's the difference between how proud I am with Crew Life. Yeah. And I, I know it's good. And I don't, I'm, I made it for myself and I don't care if people don't like it. And that's one thing you've got to realize in life. Like there's a massive band that I don't like, but I know a lot of people love. I'll, I'll say the band, Red Hot Chili Peppers. Yeah. Me personally, I never got into them, but you know, they do what they do. And, and that's, I think one thing in life you've got to remember is not everyone's going to like you or not everyone's going to like your music or whatever it is you're doing. And you yeah. can't let that stop you from, from going after your dreams. Absolutely, and it, it's that whole concept of you can't please everyone, and or you can't be liked by everyone. Oh, and um, you know, speaking the of, only thing that we can sorry. really do is be authentic to ourselves and create that internal satisfaction and significance within it, within what it is that we do and what it is that we love. Because 
you're you're on a you're on a mugs game if you try to please everyone. Be, it just can't happen. Hundred percent, and you know a lot of life changes for me this year and late last year. We'll get into that soon, but for a long time I was kind of I wouldn't say in a rut. Yeah, but I was trying to please every. I was I was trying to please everyone, and it just it sucked the energy out of me, and I, I just wasn't. I'm not going to say I wasn't myself because I was still myself. I was just a different version. Yeah. And I just, this, I was watching an edge, speaking of Ed Sheeran, I was watching an interview with him and hearing what he said, uh, just flip the switch. And now I'm like, don't care what people think anymore. And which is, I've always, I've always um, grown up like that. Don't care what people think. I'm going to put out whatever I want. But then, you know, when you start to listen to the, the negative comments, which I, I did and kind of just let – it got me down. Anyway, Ed, Ed said there is, no, there is no key to success. There's no key to success, but the key to failure is trying to please everyone. And that hearing that, I was like, boom, light bulb yeah. moment. That's true. If you want to fail, try and please everyone. Yeah, <clears throat> and, uh, and staying in that middle ground, trying not to upset – um, someone I was listening to a Sam Harris pad, uh, podcast today, and the the lady that she was speak he was speaking with was a very much appreciative of the actual venom and toxicity that arose from some of the writings that she had because what it did was create more people l- reading her stuff, created a bigger audience, and ultimately brought her new people that. Um, were influenced by what she's saying. So so if she was concerned about those haters, so to speak, she would never yeah. have written what she wrote and therefore limited yeah. herself. So there's um there's just so much to that, hey, and, and we see it on social media now, especially with, you know, the footballers. We we're, we're seeing a lot of people on Twitter, they they're calling uh, like Twitter a sewer. I actually find Twitter quite humorous. Um, to yes. see how much energy that people put into Twitter to to let people to let people know their feelings or about how their team's losing and all this sort of stuff. So in in some ways, to me, it's quite humorous. But if I'm that footballer who's um, got skills and dedication, and I've made it to the top of my game. If they're listening to that stuff, that they seriously need to. Um, Get out of that. Get out of that space because if you're reading and listening to that stuff, um, it's got to affect you one way or another sooner or later. So some people say, yeah, I just brush it off. So, well, why put yourself in the position where you've got to brush it off? Just stay out. Exactly. So. Yeah. And and the rule applies to anything in life, Tony. Like, yeah. um, like obviously me and you, You've both lost weight, and I think weight loss is is another big thing where you can't try and please everyone. Because if you're doing, let's say, let's say keto, you're doing yep. keto and you are loving it, and you've lost twenty kilos and you've been maintaining that twenty kilo weight loss for a year, you love it. You absolutely love it. Someone who's never done keto will say, "Oh, keto is bad." <laughs> It's, yeah. it's true because they've never done. They've never, you know, they've never done it, and that's the same with my music. You know, the only, you know, I'm pretty sure Sheeran seeing what I was going through, he would be criticising me. He's like, man, keep going. You've you've got this. Yeah. Whereas someone who, um, who who's not inspiring to be a musician, who who's never written a song in their life, they're the ones that will try and bring you down. That's the same with with weight loss because if maybe someone try keto. And it didn't work for them, so they're going to try and bring down everyone. Yeah. And that's getting back to try and play. And that's what I'm getting back trying to get um trying to please everyone. You can't. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, if, if you're trying to, if you're trying to lose weight five different ways because five different people have said, "Oh, this works." It's, it's like you, you do your head in. You're like, I just can't take it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, just because you've got an opinion on something, doesn't mean that that opinion should be shared. Oh. You know, some some opinions are probably best kept to ourselves. And, yep. you know, it, that person that tried keto, they obviously have their thought process. But, hey, 
encourage the person, you know. There's, you know, as you know, me and my wife, Sharon, do a lot of run running and we sign up for fun runs and half marathons and whatnot. And one of the biggest yeah. kicks I get out of doing those runs, apart from the fact that it's a personal and mental challenge for ourselves, is yeah. seeing those other people where it's a personal and mental challenge, someone who is... Um, physically and visually overweight and they're really pushing themselves to to complete yeah. whether it's the 10k or the half marathon and to me that's inspiring yet for, for others they sit there and they'll they'll yell out names or you know um try and yeah, change exactly. these people and and i just don't get that i don't get that we should be encouraging people um mm. to live healthier we lives should. and if people want to aspire to something Pat them on the back and help them take those steps because getting started is often the the hardest thing. It is, and this is kind of social media and, and weight loss. Like you said, we should encourage people to, to lose weight. But, you know, this big thing at the moment, and I don't know too much on it, but loving your body at every size seems to be a big movement. Yeah. It's, which is great. I'm all for it. all for it. Like you know, love your body um, at at every size. Yeah. But it yeah. seems to me, it's it's people saying, it it seems that I don't know if this is true or not, but it's like they're encouraging people not to lose weight. If you know, you're happy how you are. Yeah, yeah love your you body are. at every size. Yeah. I I think I, yeah. I read something yeah. around that recently. There was a there's a um, there's a couple of Instagram. Um, Influencers and one's a Influ comedian from Australia who does send ups of you know some of the more famous influencers that are trying to make themselves photoshopped to look fantastic. And she does a bit of a piss take of them, and she's got one of the most popular Instagram accounts there is. And I think the research I saw was that um, it, w it was about people's happiness. So, what they found is that people yeah. who followed some of these um, send-up accounts as opposed to the influencer accounts where the people that were happiest were the ones that could actually love themselves for who they are and have a bit of a laugh with um, with the, 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 um, the send-up account. So that was interesting to me because, you know, some people would see that as a bit cynical and a bit, you know, um, below average reaching. But, you know, if people... Uh, I mean, the biggest thing in life is that people go searching for this thing called happiness yet it's there every day in who we are it who is. we meet who we love who we um, communicate with you know that's where happiness comes from it doesn't come from comparing ourselves to others or or scrolling through a facebook feed no it doesn't and going back to how career life started with uh, all these to be honest it's probably 80 percent of instagram these days yeah, is bikini photos get you get your clothes off, and oh, I get more likes when I take my clothes off, and like, you shouldn't be focusing on likes or followers, yeah. and a lot of a lot of people do, and that, and that you know, I guess brings them down if they don't get a certain amount of likes or they caring about followers. Like I couldn't care how many views or streams Crew Life had, but I I do keep an eye on it for the fact that it's growing. Yeah. I don't care if I get 5,000, 10,000 views in a week. That doesn't pay the bills. You know, I care that it's growing. And that's, I think, I've never had a song before that is keep it keeps growing every day. Yeah, yeah. And you Crew know, Life's doing that? It is, it is. It's uh, up to 2,300 views on YouTube, which is, which is great. Like, I don't care if it was 1,000 or 50,000. It's the fact that it's growing. Yeah which means it's growing and it's just going to keep growing, which is great. You know, it's kind of like a, a tree, you know, plant a tree, water it, watch it grow. Same yeah. with crew life. And that's happening, which is great because stuff I've put out before, it's kind of, you know, everyone's listened to it in one day and then that's it. It just stays, you know, stable yeah. Yeah. where I keep an eye on it because it's growing. So, which is, which is great. Absolutely. You know, I've seen some, I seen something the other day and this kind of made me laugh and yeah. on Instagram got five and reach five reach five thousand followers, right? So her friends organized a surprise 
and got a big five and a big K balloon to celebrate. Yeah. And I'm like, what's there to celebrate? What's 5,000 followers do? If that's not paying your bills, you know, like at the end of the day, we all need money and blah, blah, blah. And one day I'll be able to quit my job and do music full time, whether I'm earning this or this, I don't care. As long as I can do music full time, I don't care how many followers I have. Yeah. And I think a lot, a lot of people these days are consumed by that. They are. Yeah. It's, um, the concept really should be that life's not about likes. It's, it's about what you were just talking about. It's about progression. It's about how are we progressing towards the person that we've be, that we should be, that we should become. It's not about, you know, owning the big plasma TV and driving the Maserati or, or, or things like that. It, that's trying to find happiness and satisfaction in material goods. It's about who are we and what are we going to become. Life's not about likes. And, you know, ultimately, you know, some of the research in and around social media is that um, it's just as addictive as what, you know some of the heavy drugs are they, it's just as addictive yeah. as alcohol and food um sabotage yeah. and all of this sort of stuff so you know it's dangerous places and if if people are getting their gratification because a thousand people have liked a photo that's a that's a bit of a dangerous place to be it is it's not like you know you walk down the street and you see this little bubble on someone's head of how many followers they have <laughs> you know Actually, there's um. Oh, what, I saw a series where that was actually the case. People could actually see. I've forgotten what it was called now, but um, it was on. Uh, it was a Netflix and uh, and yep. yeah, it's really quite overwhelming when all of a sudden your followers and your likes are out there for the public, and people react to you based on that. And heaven forbid if yeah, we ever get to that sort of place, because um, yeah, I hope very, not. Very interesting space. Speak, so, speak. Speaking of Maserati and happiness, yeah. One of the one of the podcasts I've been listening to at the moment is a uh, is a very dear friend of ours, Jeff Jower. Yeah. I don't know if you've caught any of his pod. I don't know if you've caught any of his podcasts, but uh, he's got real vulnerable, and that's so attractive in someone when when someone tells you about hitting rock bottom and, and losing everything and money doesn't become, you know, it doesn't, uh, sorry, happiness doesn't come from, money doesn't buy happiness is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. And just hearing Jeff talk is just amazing. Like we're talking about Maserati because Jeff bought a Maserati and then he got depressed because of 58 Ferrari. And I think, uh, you know, we live in this world where money is such, uh, oh, you know, you're important. And if you've got lots of money and it doesn't, like happiness comes from the inside and it was, you know, it doesn't come from likes on Instagram or, or how many yeah. followers you got. Yeah. But, you know, Jeff's done a, some really great stuff <clears throat> just uh, over the last year or so. And, you know, he's reconnected with himself. He, he's got a real love for animals and, um, he does. And, and you're just seeing a completely different persona. So to probably the Jeff that, um, some of the body trip legends would have known back in the old heyday and some of the weekend uh, events that they used to hold. So, yeah, uh, see, and, I had no, I had no idea until hearing his podcast, like yeah. some of the things. Like I knew, like I've watched his journey for so long. I actually ran into him a couple of weeks ago, which is kind of crazy. Yeah, he uh, he was down in Melbourne doing a uh, podcast with Craig Harper. Okay. And he was flying back, and there he was at the gate, and sat down and had a had a quick chat. Yeah, yeah, it's um, I've been watching the journey, I guess, and it's something that um, I guess anyone who knows Jeff is really proud of who he is and who he's become, and um, the message that he sends, and you know, quite rightly now, he's probably feeling. Like he's like he's he, what he's done is he's placed significance, his own significance, and he, that that whole learning that you know there was a real message in the mess that he got himself, and he's really yeah. sharing that with the world. And you know, I think that that which takes courage. We need more of that. 
Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, kudos to him, eh? But um, kudos to you. You're, um, yeah. You've got you've hit another milestone around being sober, Mister Bailey. Yeah, three years next Sunday. So that's about a week off. Yeah, it's um, but I've decided, and now I'm not going to say why yet, but I'm having a drink in two months' time. Oh, wish <laughs> Yeah. Okay, so but three, three years. years sober, and it just—I I suppose when I saw that, because you, you and me keep in contact, and when I saw that that was approaching, yeah. I, I thought, you know, that's that's pretty special, and it really does show that, you know, so many people get daunted by what lies ahead and what who they want to be and all this sort of stuff, and it's just one day at a time. So when you stopped having a beer or having whatever it was that was your poison in those days. Um, I'm sure that yeah. you weren't thinking, I'm going to make three years. I'm sure that you were just thinking, I'm not going to have a drink today. I'm not going to no have way. a drink today. And then you didn't just think built. I was going to hit three years. Yeah, didn't did not think I was going to uh, hit three years or two years. You know, I got I got back from... I didn't get back from America. I was actually in America when I decided. Yeah, I had it. I was having a, I was having a cider and Carl was junior, and I was about to fly home. And I'm like, yeah. "This is it, last drink." And then I didn't think I was gonna. I was probably. I knew I was gonna do a year. I just. I was like, you know what? I need to focus on my weight loss and 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 paying the paying some debt off. Like we we spoke about in my last podcast yeah. and. But a year went by and I still wasn't at my weight loss goal. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. And I just, it was exactly what it was in the end. It was just one day at a time. I'm just, you know, not drinking. Yeah. And then here we are almost three years later. And, you know, I'm not at my weight loss goal. But to be honest, looking back, that was kind of a, not a, I wouldn't say a silly goal to have a weight loss goal because I've all got a weight loss goal. And, you know, not somewhere I want to stay, just somewhere I think I want to hit and then go yeah. from there kind of thing because I've been very close before. And But now looking back, I had a really, you know, when I hit my weight loss goal, I'd love to do a podcast with you, Tony, just purely on my weight loss journey. <laughs> but back then when I stopped drinking, <laughs> it's been nine years, so I should yeah. be able to fill the time very easily. Um, but looking back, I had a really bad relationship with food. Yeah. Now... I've got a really, really, really good relationship with food. So having a drink in two months, you know, I might not be at my weight loss goal like I originally planned. Yeah. But looking back, I didn't, I didn't have a really good relationship with food. Now I do. So I'm, I'm happy and I'm proud that I've got a good relationship with food because probably that should have been the goal to begin with. But I didn't realise it back then. I thought my relationship with food, obviously being overweight, it wasn't the best. But yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so. Uh, and and I guess there's probably <clears throat> people listening to us that, that that are thinking, wow, three years. But you know, I, I had a couple of friends doing Dry July this year, for example, and you could see the daily struggles that. They, and one of them was is a sales rep, so they're always on the road, they're always in airports, they're always flying, and you know, it becomes that real crux that if you get to the airport, you know, half an hour early. Uh, and what you what you're going to start boarding, you know, you just go have a beer to to buy the time, and you could see the the real, um, I suppose those real temptations that that um, people had to face each and every day to get through dry July, let alone trying to get through three years. But but I suppose in some ways, not drinking becomes the norm, then, doesn't it? And you found other ways to cope. It does. Yeah, I just I think. You know, drinking, you know, I never, I never drank every day or like I said, I never had a problem and, but like, I think three years so it was, I think it was a, one of the best things I've ever done because it just, be a world, oh Tony, yeah. you know, like, most people like, relations, that's awesome because, you know, I guess it's, People out there that would that want to do it, but then you know society and what they care what people are thinking, all this kind of stuff, and you know I just like I said, I got to the point where I'm like, is drinking is 
really it's not getting me where I want to where I, where yeah. I want to go. Yeah. So I and quitting just it just opened up my eyes to like a whole different world and you know I've I've like I said I never had a problem but I've seen and it's started across people because they you know they were an alcoholic or addicted to drugs so they're yeah. under the influence you know like a car crash and had to get sober and you know that kind of stuff so I, you know I give it credit to people you yeah. know so and and in many ways it's um it's how we cope with our day to day life that yeah that, that leads us down the path to things like um alcoholism and you know um yeah. or even just having a drink on a weekend sort of culture that a lot of people get into yeah i just i didn't want to i guess i've probably been guilty of having a hard time and drinking and not even realizing okay this is how i'm coping you know like i said i am having a drink in two months something yeah. big's happening that um but you know obviously that breaks breaks the side of it. so i don't want to i don't want to come over and work and have a drink or have a drink just because I can. Like you said, you get to the airport early and you have a drink. You have a drink. like there's so many reasons. Now I'm in control of when I want to have a drink. You know? yeah. So which is great. You know, like yeah. I smoke cigars. I've smoked cigars for the last ten or so years. And I love it, and I don't smoke them every day. Um, you know, it's not like oh, I've had a hard day. I've got to have a cigar. I have cigars when I celebrate something or. Like I've got four days off now. I'm home with mum and dad. I bought a pack of cigars. I'm just just relaxed. Like I'm not having them to cope, you know. Yeah. And that's the same. You know, we do it with everything. We do it with, with food, alcohol, you know, drugs, you know, whatever it may be. Yeah, yeah. And um, and once again, just to get into some healthy coping habits, you know, going, uh, you know, if someone it, it does have some worries about how they currently cope with living in the world and uh, you know sometimes it can be just as easy as um going for a walk of an afternoon after the job's finished you know um because we can tell ourselves lies as well you know we we get home from work and we tell ourselves that we're exhausted so so when we're using that sort of language we are just going to like jump on the couch and veg out and do whatever um but it's, you know, it's, I, it's, it's exactly the same as people going to the gym and yeah. saying, oh, I, I deserve that. I deserve this now because I've, yeah. I've, 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 um, I've gone to the gym for an hour so I can have this pizza. Well, really, you probably haven't burnt enough calories to compensate for the pizza. And it's the same as, you know, that language you're talking about. Oh, I deserve, I can have a drink now. I've had a rough day, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so we're giving ourselves excuses. We're giving ourselves permission to to do things that we know are probably not the best for us. but um, And we've got to be able to, you know, whether we, it's a trigger or whether it's a gauge, we've got to be able to just pull up stumps on that. So, so stay yeah, in your you own do. path, Matty Bailey. You can't be accused of straying off your path. No. So what does that path look like from here on in? What's next? My, what's next? Yeah. Uh, well, the the EP is happening, so that'll probably be released next year. Yeah, because uh, I don't want to rush it. You know, I want I want a crew life out before Christmas last year, and it came out May this year. So that's one lesson I've learned: just don't rush it. So yeah, so the the EP will come out. There'll be one music video, and that music videos I'll be there, and uh, you're a part of that. Yeah, that photo you sent me, but there's going to oh, be like a lot that? more. Yeah, it's going to be a lot more expanding on that, which I'm excited about. Yeah. Um, just just focusing on music is the path. You know, last time we spoke, you know, I live in Melbourne now, Tony, moved down, so don't get up to Brisbane that often. I'm, I do miss the warm weather. <laughs> so moving to Melbourne was was a, was a big change. Yeah. And it was something something I've, I've wanted for eight years. So yeah. to finally, you know, I've had a, a few emotional moments. I'm like, wow, I live in Melbourne. I'm now a four-hour drive from my mum and dad, and it's awesome. Like, so, but, yeah, so my path going forward is is that the EP, the music video, probably 
probably a few other things. That yeah, I've got no, I've got no idea yet. Um, yeah. but just yeah, focusing on on the weight loss, which is good. Like I've got a really good relationship with food, and and just just moving forward. Excellent. We'll um have to catch up when I'm um, I'm in Melbourne coming. Up on, I'm going to run 42 kilometres in that city on Sunday, October 13. So we'll have to catch up probably after. Ooh. Yeah. When, after, uh, good, because actually it's funny you say that date because I, I'm not going to say it yet, but that's the week I'm having my first drink in three years. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I, um, I get back from wherever I mystery matthew might be on that sunday so uh, <laughs> mystery matthew. and then i've got that whole week off so mate we'll, uh, we'll catch up for it we'll catch up for a drink <laughs> yeah absolutely and then after the marathon we're doing the great ocean road all the way through oh. to adelaide so that'll be cool too so looking forward to perfect some wonderful time with um with sharon so that's going to be a great trip not quite sure about the 42k don't know if i'm i've had some more (laughs) troubles with my legs this year so yeah um, my physio and my remedial massage just keep saying tony i wouldn't be doing it (laughs) so i've got to listen to good advice but um i certainly don't want sharon to be running it by herself either so it's one of those dilemmas that i'm in at the moment but i'll be there so i might you'll be be there there i'll be there i'll be there (laughs) i'll be there that's uh yeah that's that's um this is obviously that's the music video I'm doing and yeah I can't wait yeah because that yeah. song I remember our last podcast I listened to it the other day and I said I didn't really like the song but I do because of it's just it's funny this is ironic but this song has been there for me yeah yeah <laughs> so it has like I remember a couple of years ago I was in Vegas for the first four days i just wanted to come home i was just so anxious didn't want to be there and then i played that gig that led to the whole bar singing and someone got up <laughs> singing with me and it's just yeah it's just been amazing mate the song's got it's a life song, of its it? own so <clears throat> it, it, it does yeah hey and just on another time. interesting side note last time we spoke was on the 22nd of de- the last podcast we recorded was the 22nd of December. It was the day after day after Gravy Paul Day, Kelly. Gravy Day, yeah. And um, guess who's singing up here in Brisbane again on the on Gravy Day? I've got to guess Paul Kelly, Mr. Paul hey. Kelly, so. <laughs> Mr. Paul Kelly, mate. That's going to be so, so cool again. So uh, I love the bloke, be, I love his music, and um. You know, once again, it's uh, he must like Brisbane on Gravy Day. He does. He must like it. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Matty, as always, been an absolute pleasure having you on there. It How has, can people mate. catch up with you? They can catch me at uh, on Facebook dot com forward slash Matt Bailey Music. Yeah. Or I've started a uh, Instagram music now, which is Mafu Baywe. So, it's, yeah, what's the it's, deal um, with that, Matthew Bayewe? Matthew, so M A W F E W E B A I W E E. Yeah. I'm, so, a, a friend of mine, I think she was putting my number in her phone, and for some reason, she just put it in as that. Yeah. No idea why. I can't remember how it, it was years ago now, but yeah. she put it as that. So, I thought, you know what, I'm going to run with that. See if that if that'll stay in people's minds i don't know i couldn't have matt bailey because yeah that's taken so <laughs> maybe yeah so Matthew just bailey, go through so. your social media stuff again how can people find you yeah so instagram is mafu bailey <laughs> hard to say the braces facebook is facebook.com forward slash matt bailey music yeah. Spotify, Apple Music, Google Play is is Matt Bailey. Finally separated my music with all the other Matt Baileys out there, which is great. So it's Matt Bailey. My logo is a little moustache. Yeah. Head to, head to YouTube, type in Matt Bailey Crew Life or just Crew Life. It comes. It's the first thing now that pops up. If you type in Crew Life, the suggestion box will drop down and Matt Bailey's there if you've never searched before, which is really cool, which again shows it's growing. And you can check out the the music video, animated lyric video for Crew Life. Yeah. 
and I'll um, endeavour to put at least one or two of those links in the description. <laughs> so you seem to have a plethora Perfect. there. So um, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Chuck, chuck in the music video. I can everyone will love that, and then that because that that takes you to everything else. Anyway, yeah. so if you go to the YouTube in the in the description is my Instagram, my Facebook. That's what we'll do then. I'll All put that. YouTube into the description as always, Matt. It's been Perfect. awful. Oh, it's been awful. It's been awesome. It's been you. awful. <laughs> Was it that bad? <laughs> having you on the podcast again. It's always good. Some some little gems that you've released as well. Hey, good luck. Um, yeah. If you haven't heard Crew Life um, to the listeners, do yourself a favour. It will run around in your head for a, a couple of days. It is a little bit catchy. It's uh, I think the closest Matt Bailey's got to a pop song. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what else he pops up. Uh, uh, until next time, everyone, um, I'll see you then. Don't forget the golden rule. Just don't be an arsehole. I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye.